So good good evening, good morning, or good afternoon, depends on where you are. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to ICANX Talks tonight. My name is Rong Chen from Huazhong University of Science and Technology, and I'm going to moderate the talk tonight. So um, as you have seen that we have a wonderful June sessions. We started with the ICANX Young Scientist Awardee talks from Professor Liu and Professor Jones. And then we have Professor Bowen from Max Planck Institute for Polymer Research and Professor Ferrari from University of Cambridge and also Professor Kojo from University of Texas of Austin. And last week, as we announced that Professor She as our speaker tonight, but due to personal emergencies. So we are quite honored to have Professor Xiao Shen Zhang from University of Electronic Science and Technology of China, UESTC instead. And also we have a strong panelist, Professor Jie Li from uh, Shanghai Institute of Microsystems and Information Technology, China, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Professor Shui Long Zhang from Beijing Institute of Technology, and our ex challenger tonight, Dr. Jiu Shui Xu, uh, Jiu, Jiu Shui, Jiu Shui Xu, uh, from uh, TU uh, Braunschweig, uh, Germany. So, first, let me introduce uh, our speaker tonight, Professor Xiao Shen Zhang uh, at UESTC first. So, Professor Zhang's research field lies in MAMS, NAMS. And Professor Zhang has published more than 60 uh, peer-reviewed papers and three scientific paper, uh, books, authorized more than 30 invention patterns, and contributes over 30 conference talks, including uh, some plenary talks for IEEE Power MAMS 2021. Professor Zhang also won many academic awards, including national Young Talent Plans, Excellent Doctorate Dissertation of Chinese Institute of Electronics, etc. And Professor Zhang also served as a TPC member and session chairs for transducers as well as IEEE NAMS. He currently serves as associate editor for IEEE T Nano and a young star editor for Nano Research. So without further ado, let me welcome Professor Zhang to the stage for his talk tonight, the self-powered smart electronics based on silk fiber rings. Uh, Professor Zhang, uh, please come to the stage. Okay, so hello everyone. Nice to see you again, actually. <laughs> so uh, should I uh, share my screen now? Yes, please. Okay. So give me one moment. Um, okay. Um, it looks good. So, Please start. Okay. Thank you. So thank you so much. Thank Professor Chen for the nice uh, introduction. So hello, everyone. Uh, this is Xiao Shen Zhang from School of Integrated Circuit Science and Engineering with University of Electronic Science and Technology of China. So actually, it's my great honor to be here to share our uh, recent uh, latest research activities, focusing on the self-powered smart electronics based on the silk fiber. So actually, this is not the first time I come to the ICANX platform, uh, but I would like to say it's a very wonderful platform to, uh, to, to help to gather the researchers of the world and then we can exchange the ideas. So it's my great honor to come here again. I hope that uh, during today, the talk I can uh, I can uh, uh, to give you some uh, the 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 research um, the goals that we uh, achieved uh, recently. So, uh, firstly, please allow me to uh, just uh, take uh, several minutes to introduce briefly about my university and my lab. So, as you know, that I come from uh, UESTC. So, actually, UESTC is located in a very beautiful city Chengdu, an ancient but modern city actually. So you know, I, I guess all of you uh, know that uh, the Panda, so actually Chengdu is the hometown of Panda. And I uh, I guess that all of you know uh, that uh, there's very famous Chinese food named uh, hot spot. So the hot spot actually is also uh, come from uh, Chengdu, Sichuan province. 
And uh, UESTC actually, uh, if we talk about history, it can go back to 1956, actually. And then we have uh, the, the, this university, but with the different name. And after more than uh, 16 year development, this uh, uh, university has, uh, has get, uh, get very, uh, the, the rapid development and the known in China as the cradle of China's the national electronic industry and the leader of China's electronic universities. So UESTC is the backbone for the development of China's electronic information industry. So um, here I would like to uh, show that uh, I would like to show that actually in uh, in UESTC we have the very good um, the uh, the high uh, the education uh, the the field that to cover or if you want to find some of the research field in uh, the electronic and the microelectronics and uh, uh, the computer science, you can find all this field in UESTC actually. And uh, here is um, the ranking of UESTC. So during the past the two rounds of the national uh, discipline, uh, the evaluations, so actually we get the top first in China. And uh, here uh, for the research uh, national platform we have, we have five national key laboratories and four national engineering laboratories and one national engineering center and one national innovation centers. So if you uh, wish to find a job and some faculty positions in the field of electronics, materials, and uh, uh, related research field, I believe that you can find a, a suitable uh, the, 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 the field in, in USTC. So warmly welcome to visit us and, uh, warmly, uh, young researchers to come to USTC and then send you down to establish your own lab here. So <clears throat> for my lab, and actually I come to, uh, USTC at the end of, uh, 2017. And then, uh, when I send you down, I, uh, just established my own lab. So, in the past uh, four years, uh, my lab is also uh, is also um, have a very good uh, the development actually. So here we have twelve uh, researchers uh, in my group, and uh, the, all the group members actually and has uh, the PhD uh, degree. And uh, um, most of the researchers in my uh, the lab is has overseas experience. And uh, this is a young, uh, grown, uh, the professional uh, research group, actually. So here's myself, actually, Professor Chen already uh, briefly introduced. Uh, so I will just skip here and we have some facilities. So uh, we, we have the very good um, the platform for the micro nanofabrication observation and uh, uh, as well as uh, for the electrical uh, or the mechanical, the property uh, testing or characterization. Uh, and uh, even this group is very young, but we also uh, awarded several uh, owners. Like 2012, 2022, we have the Provincial the Innovation Research Group Award. And actually, this is very high level uh, in Sichuan province. It's only five in the whole the province. And in 2021, we... Um, we uh, got uh, the provincial, the young talent research group is only two per year in Sichuan province. So uh, for the research activities, my lab actually, uh, we uh, focus on, we, we focus on the MEMS and the NEMS. Uh, and we have uh, some, uh, the uh, very, the good uh, platform to support us to uh, fabricate some uh, devices and then integrated this uh, functional components to, together to form the very uh, very useful the microsystem uh, as I uh, as is shown as as I showing on the left side that there's three uh, the very typical research achievements in my lab one is the single chip self powered multi multi sensing RFID smart talk microsystem and uh, the second one is uh, the multi-sensing integrated chip. So actually we fabricated this chip by using the T-Post technology. And then we integrated uh, three, actually it's more than three, uh, three, um, the, 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 the functional, uh, the, the sensing 
uh, the the component together, like uh, acceleration, strength, and temperature, and as well uh, as uh, the magnetic field, actually. And uh, beside this, uh, the chip and the microsystems, actually, we also take some uh, research activities in the field of the for the variable. So, which is also uh, the topic I I would like to share uh, today. So uh, we also carry out over uh, 30 national and provincial uh, projects. And uh, here's uh, some uh, research uh, achievements uh, in uh, my lab and uh, uh, including uh, more than 100 journal, uh, the papers and uh, uh, some approved uh, more than, uh, more than uh, the, the, the 15, the patents. Okay, so uh, let's move forward to uh, the topic I would like to uh, to share today. So uh, I have uh, five uh, the different parts uh, to introduce the today's topic. The first is about research background and motivation. I would like to explain uh, why we selected this materials, the silk fiber, and uh, why we think that this material is is uh, very how to say it's very uh, very attractive, and then we uh, wish to use it to. Uh, to construct uh, some functional uh, devices like in the field of micro energy and multi sensing and then finally we integrate these two components together to form them the, the micro systems and then in the fifth part i would like to give some small word to see that uh, we wish to uh, we wish to accelerate to promote this field to form an all in one perspective okay so research background as um, you know, that actually my research field is focused on the micro electromechanical systems. And uh, so um, for in this field, actually, uh, we, we have two, the main, uh, the fields. Uh, the one is about a cell power, smart integrated micro system technology for the, uh, for the, the fifth uh, generation uh, communication technology, and as well as the internet of things. And the second one is, for the multifunctional sensing technology for the smart human machine interfaces. So uh, when we talk about the micro nano uh, electromechanical system, actually we know that normally you have several, uh, I mean, actually for, when we talk about MEMS, actually different people can give different uh, the definitions. So, uh, but for me, I think that uh, when we talk about the MEMS, uh, we know that uh, for a typical MEMS devices or system, Actually, there are three typical components. The first one is micro nano sensors. We employ these micro nano sensors to collect the information in the environment and convert it to be the electrical signals. Otherwise, it's possible uh, we can exchange the information from the environment to to our the electrical the systems. And then when we get this the sensing signals, we will send to uh, the data processor and the data processor will handle the signals and to uh, to detect the whether the temperature is too high or the humidity is too low and then it can generate the control signal and this control signal will send to the terminates the components named the micro nano actuator and then we can have the corresponding uh reactions uh, to 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 respond to the change in the environment. So this is uh, the MEMS the system we talk about. But uh, we know that not all the MEMS uh, devices or system uh, contain all of these three components, right? But as attractive future warrant, we the researchers always wish to integrate these all functional parts. Uh, together to form the smart microsystems. But the question is actually behind this concept that we need to fix the two critical challenges. The first one is all these functional components need power. So we have to find a appropriate power source for these distributed sensors or distributed the functional components to, to help them to get the sustainable and the maintenance free the power source. And then to make these functional component sensors to have the ability to for for the long term uh, the, the the working, and then the second is we wish to find a way to put this all this function together func uh, the functional component together to form the smart microsystems, and beside this that actually 
we know that currently uh, we wish to know as 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 many as possible the information in the environment. We want to know the humidity and temperature and strength and strength and a lot of uh, the environmental factors we wish to detect. Normally, if we want to detect the information in the environment, you need the sensor. But for the typical sensors, uh, the one sensor can only detect the one information. So is it possible to find a way to fabricate or find some uh, proper uh, methods to integrate this the sensing component together and then to realize the multi-sensing that is one of the hot research topic in this field. Okay, so let's see that the power source. When we talk about the power source, we always uh, think about the battery. Um, to be honest, the battery is still the first choice um, currently for for the power supplying of micro nano electronic devices and systems, but it's not the best choice because uh, the battery will bring some environment hazards and also for some distributed uh, application uh, field, actually uh, impossible to always learn to, to lend a long wire for the frequent recharge for the battery. So it's possible, it is impossible. So um, the power requirement of the micro nano electronic system, especially when we talk about the internet of things and the distributed sensors, we always want to find a way to realize the sustainable and maintenance free the power source uh, for, for the power supply for this kind of the sensors or the wireless nodes. And the second is we always think about that uh, we uh, we we hope that this uh, the power supply measures is uh, is green power source and without any pollution. So the question is: is it, is there any some uh, appropriate uh, the powering uh, the approaches um, as we talk about? Yes. So. Energy harvesting from our living mind, or we talk about is energy harvesting uh, from the ambient, actually is uh, considered as the very attractive method to respond to this need. But the question is how to harvest and convert this environment energy. But actually, if you look around, you found that actually there's many, many the huge power source in different forms existing about in our living environments, such as the sunshine and thermal dissipation and body motion and airflow and ocean web, right? But the question is how to convert them. So here um, we use the table to summarize, to briefly summarize uh, the, 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 the main, uh, the five the technologies that the researchers had developed to, to realize it's a power, uh, uh, the, the, the source, or, or we call it energy harvesting. So um, the first one is a photovoltaic effect. Second is the thermoelectric effect. And third is electromagnetic effect. And the fourth is the piezoelectric effect. And finally is the triplectric effect, or we call it electrostatic effect. So for all these technologies, I just thought like the, 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 the two sides of the coin. Actually, there is some advantages and disadvantages for each of them. For example, for the photovoltaic effect, uh, for this kind of devices, you can always get the direct current, uh, the output, uh, and uh, actually we have very uh, the metro, the the industrial, the fabrication, the process for the photovoltaic, uh, the 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 cell. Uh, is also named the solar cell, but for this kind of the solar cell, this owning work on the light. So when we uh, try to harvest the energy in the in the night, it is impossible to. To, to use the photovoltaic effect, actually. So I will not um, go further to the details, but just to summarize the list on the, on the right side of this slide to show you that for all of them, actually, it's to suffer some one years and additional one years. So uh, in, in this topic, so I will just focus on uh, one of uh, the, the latest technology developed in recent years. Uh, which is also named the, the triplectric effect or uh, the electrostatic effect. So in the future, 
um, researchers always think about that. When we solve the problem of the sustainable power source for this kind of the distributed sensors or some functional components, and then we can integrate them together. So finally, we can get this all-in-one cell-powered flexible microsystems. So how to do it? So this is uh, the illustration. So we drawing uh, about five years ago. So uh, here that you can see that uh, for the cell-powered flexible and variable microsystem, it contains the four, or we can say it's a five, the core, the component. The first one, we have to integrate the micro nano sensing devices uh, in this system and then to convert uh, the, the environment information to be the electrical signals. And then we have the proceeding and responding uh, components, or we can set is uh, the IC circuits to handle the signals and then generate the control signals, send it to the actuators to, uh, to, to correspondingly respond the environment change. But for all these functional components, you need to find the power source. So we have to integrate the power source together. And as a smart um, component, we also try to integrate the smart discipline to help people to have the very the good, uh, the human uh, machine interface uh, to see, to observe the change of the environment or to help people to understand what happens. So this is we talk about the cell power, the flexible, the variable microsystem. So that is uh, the research background and motivation uh, for uh, for the we, we talk about the smart, uh, the cell power, smart electronics. So behind that, actually, we try to solve two main the demands for for the the rapid development of the Internet of Things. One is the sustainable power source, and the second is multi-functional sensing requirement. Okay, so that is uh, the demands of, of the rapid development of the IoT, as well as the research field of MEMS. So the question is, we we have to find appropriate materials to construct these flexible and variable microsystems. So actually, we have a lot of, uh, how to say, choice. So, but... Uh, we know that silicon is the basic uh, stone to construct uh, the IC uh, the society actually, but the the silicon based electronic devices uh, is no longer uh, fully meets the requirements of of uh, the current development, uh, the faster development of uh, the the microsystem and the devices, especially. Uh, in some application field, actually, we wish to have these devices uh, have the the capability uh, of the variable or some even uh, the, the the implantable. So we have to find uh, uh, appropriate materials for this flexible electronics. So the flexible electronics, but this flexible electronics is still face some problems such as excellent the functional materials, sustainable uh, energy supply, and multiple the functional integration. So flexible electronics are mainly realized by the fabricating the functional components onto the flexible the materials. So flexible materials are the essential to construct uh, the high performance, uh, the flexible electronics. So in general, we expect the flexible materials to have the multi, uh, the uh, the, the features such as the biodegradable, at least the biocompatibility actually, and transparency in some uh, specific application field. And uh, sometimes we wish these materials has the stretchability actually. So with the development of variable electronic devices in recent years, the biocompatibility and biodegradability become more and more important. So that is um, the requirements of the development of the variable electronic and flexible electronics. So the purpose uh, in uh, my group is to seek the excellent, the natural organic materials and use them to realize the functional devices, including the sensing, uh, the prospection, energy harvesting, the radio frequency maps and the microsystems. So the most widely used natural materials in my group is the silk bone cocoons and the carrots. 
so they are the process uh, the uh, processed into the silk uh, the the fiber and cellulose so um but for today's the talk i just focus on the silk uh, fiber in the future i hope that i can maybe uh if i uh, was is invited uh, the third time and then i can share some forms of the silk fiber uh, were widely used in my lab it also um it also uh, has the multifunctional uh, the features such as the piezoelectric uh, property and the temperature sensitivity and a strong ability to lose electrons and then we can use the materials to construct the high performance the energy harvesters okay so that is the reason we why we select this super fiber so it has very good uh, the it's very easy to get uh, this materials and we can use some materials technology to fabricate the materials to be uh, the multi uh, multiple the forms and um, and the second is uh, for this materials has very good uh, the uh, the capabilities uh, by compatibility by degradability and transparency and then finally we can fabricate the functional devices by using these attractive materials. Okay, so that is the reason we selected these materials. So uh, in the second part, I would like, in the following three parts, I would like to introduce our research activity, um, focus on the microenergy harvesting and the multiple sensing and uh, the smart microsystems. Uh, all these three parts depends on the silk fiber. Okay. So let's see uh, the silk fiber, uh, how we can use these materials to realize the micro energy harvester devices. Okay, so, um, so we know that uh, energy harvesting uh, is, uh, is a very uh, interesting uh, research field. And uh, uh, as we talked about before, so there's a five, the main technologies have been developed to realize this, uh, the micro nano uh, energy, uh, the harvesting or energy harvester, uh, energy harvesters. So in 2012, uh, there's uh, the new, uh, uh, the technology uh, was developed and named TNG, which is called the triplectric uh, nano generator. So for the triplectric nano generator, actually, um, Actually, it's, uh, it's very, it's very interesting phenomenon. So, uh, this phenomenon of, uh, the triple, uh, triple, uh, electricity, electricity, um, uh, can be, uh, uh, can be go back to more, more than, uh, 2006, uh, 2600 years. But how, however, actually, uh, until now, it is still, uh, very, uh, hard to, to, to give very clear explanation about the working principle. For example, people still don't know that why the electrons transfer from one material to the other materials. Um, there's different groups is still working the field to try to uh, to to uh, look inside uh, the the working principle and the mechanism. But it's interesting that if you look into this phenomenon, we found that. Behind this phenomenon, actually, there's the huge power. So the question is how to how is the, this energy? So the working principle is showing in the right corner. Uh, you can see that there's two different materials, and it's fabricated uh, here. And one is uh, so there's two different materials we put together. So on the back side. Of these two materials, uh, we fabricated electrons. So when you apply the actinal force to these two materials and make them contact and the friction, so there will be uh, the chargers uh, generate at interface. So these chargers are outside, and uh, in the uh, the echo in the echo the density. And then when you remove this actinal force, these two layers will be separate and uh, so there will be uh, the internal uh, electrostatic field established between these two layer and then on the back side electrons uh, there's 
the chargers induced. So you can see that when you apply the force uh, uh, practically, so again and again, so we can get the current flow from one electrode to the other. And then we apply the force, so the current will just flow back from the top electrode to the bottom electrode. So then we can get the periodic uh, the current flow when you apply the periodic force to the devices. So that is a working principle for this triple electric non generator. So uh, in principle, we can summarize here. So the working principle of the triple electric non generator is the combination of the triple electrification effect to generate the electrons at the interface of these two materials, as well as the electrostatic induction to to induce the electrons from one electrode to the other electrodes. So that one we can get the current and we can get the power supply. Okay. So uh, in the past, uh, uh, how to say, in the past uh, almost uh, 10 years, so this field actually suffered the blooming development. And uh, there's a table to summarize uh, the the uh, uh, the electro, uh, electrical, uh, the features of this technology. So you can see that for the power density, it can go as high as uh, more than 100 microvolt per square centimeter, and efficiency can go higher than uh, 85%. Uh, but I would like to see uh, actually for this efficiency is uh, for the liquid metal. Uh, so if we we want to fabricate the devices for the practical applications. So normally the efficiency is uh, quite lower, but it's still higher than uh, 14%. It's still very high, actually. So there's four different, uh, the working principle, uh, four different, how to say, four different the configurations for this technology. We call it contact separation mode and relative sliding mode and a single electric mode and a free standing mode. Okay, so let's summarize a one year of this technology um, named the TNG. So it's clean energy source without any uh, the pollution. And uh, if you apply the periodic uh, the force to the devices, you can always get the power uh, the generate generation. So we can call it the sustainable power source. And if you con if you com compare this technology with the other, the four technologies, we found that actually the performance is very high and the structure is quite, quite simple. As you see that actually it's just the two different materials and we place the two electrons on the backside and then we get the device. It's quite, quite very simple. Even when you consider that el single electrodes, uh, the, the configurations, sometimes we only have one material and one electrode. And we can use the, our hands and our skin or clothes to serve as the other triplectric materials to, to, to have the uh, friction with, uh, the fabricated the devices. And then we can get the power. So structure is quite simple and, uh, there's no materials limitation. So the no materials limitation is mean, is mean that, for example, when you talk about the solar cell, we have to find the materials that can can generate electrons when when some uh, the the light to to impact to the surface, right? Not all the materials has uh, the, the 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 photovoltaic effect, but for the triple electrification effect, almost all two different materials can have this phenomenon. Even the water with the metal, water with the polymers, actually. But it doesn't mean that the materials. Um, the, it doesn't mean that the materials doesn't affect the property. So um, two different materials, one is very easy to lose electrons, one is very easy to uh, capture electrons. So if this capability is as large as possible, and then we can uh, we can fabricate the devices has a very good electrical output performance, actually. But this technology has also suffered some disadvantages like the output uh, the output performance need to be enhanced further to to uh, meet the practical uh, the power demand and as well as the simple uh, simplify the fabrication process and the people always want to find the eco friendly materials to construct the devices to minimize the side effect of uh, from the materials 
for this technology. And as well as people want to uh, to fabricate some of the functional components by using uh, this device's technology. Okay, so that is the reason we select the silk fibron to serve as uh, the energy harvesting uh, uh, the materials. As you can see that this is the triplectric pair, the table. So uh, as I said um, before, so we know that if the two materials has the huge, the capability differences to capture electrons or lose electrons, so we can uh, get the, uh, we can, uh, how to say, get uh, fabricated the devices has the better or greater uh, the electrical output performance. So you can see here for silk, that is warmed the silk materials is always occupies the top tire position in this the triplectric series table. So that is the reason we select a silk. So, but the question is how to uh, use this the silk materials to construct the devices. So you know that for the silk uh, materials we get is from uh, the 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 bobbin mooring cocoons, and then. Uh, we extracted the fibers uh, from these cocoons and dissolve it and uh, uh, by 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 using uh, the dye lysis and uh, the my uh, the micro the filtration so finally we get the pure silk fiber solution which is water based actually without any uh, without any uh, the organic the solvent actually and then this liquid, this the pure silk fiber and solution, it's very easy to dispense the, on uh, all the 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 the, the substrate, uh, the surface, and then in the room temperature. So when the water evaporate uh, evaporate out, and then we can get the solid film. So that is mean that it's very easy to use these materials to realize the soft lithography. We can transfer the patterns from uh, the pre patent surface to this kind of uh, the silk fiber film, right? So that is the reason uh, we uh, selected the silk materials, and uh, um, it, it's, it's very useful the the features for these materials actually. Um, besides that, these materials also show the outstanding transparency. You can see here in the whole the visible uh, the the visible the the the, the ranging. So this uh, material um, has more than 19% uh, of the transmitters. And uh, this material is also occupying the remarkable the water solubility. So here uh, we uh, mixed uh, this uh, solution with the blue color food dye and then fabricate uh, the fume. And so when, when put this the fume into the DI water, within 13 seconds, this fume is just uh, dissolved completely. But you may have the question that since this material is, uh, has a very remarkable water solubility, so does it mean that this device is, is unstable in the environment, especially when we consider the high uh, humidity environment? So the question is, uh, yes, but we can tune this water solubility uh, by using the water annealing uh, process, or you can just uh, put some uh, chemicals mixed with the silk fiber and then to change the water solubility uh, of the, the silk fiber. Okay, so here we fabricated the devices by dependency solution atop the surface of the polymeric materials and then we uh, plant the two electrons on the backside with two materials. So we can see that the silk fiber film and uh, um, construct the triplectric pair with the other materials is the path. So when these two materials contact and a friction together, we get the power. And according to the experimental result, we see that this is silk fiber, uh, the, the microenergy harvester can significantly enhance the output performance of TNG at almost the eight time uh, enhancement factors. And that is for the fabricated devices, it showed the remarkable the enhancement and the power density can uh, achieve it to uh, almost uh, 200 microwatt per square centimeter. And this device is transparent, flexible, and the material is, is, is uh, the, the environment friendly, actually. 
So we also test uh, the stability of the device uh, during uh, the 18,000 continuous uh, the working cycles. Uh, the devices show the very the stable um, the, the properties actually. So, and then besides these tubelectric devices and the silk fiber and material is also uh, is also employed to uh, realize uh, the um, how to say uh, to realize uh, these uh, the thermal energy uh, harvesters. <coughs> so here you can see that. <coughs> so here you can see that. We uh, fabricate the devices atop the PI, uh, the substrate, and we use the screen, uh, the screen um, printing technology to realize to realize uh, the devices <coughs> <coughs> to realize the devices. Okay, so this is uh, the the devices where uh, we fabricate it uh, by using. <laughs> by using uh, the silk uh, fiber uh, film. So uh, we use uh, the screen printing to uh, fabricate uh, the P type, uh, the materials and N type materials uh, together atop the PI, uh, the substrate. And then we can get the thermal electric pairs. So uh, you can see that it's different with the conventional thermal electric pairs. So there's the two double line. So this two double line or two double chains to help us to fabricate the devices serve as a power source when you contact them as the serious connection. And when you contact them with the parallel connection can be changed to, to, the, to the temperature sensors. So that is very interesting idea actually. So let's talk about uh, the energy harvesting, uh, the properties. As you can see here, this is the working principle of uh, the thermoelectric generation. Uh, when you apply the heat source uh, to uh, the end, uh, to the uh, one end of uh, these thermoelectric pairs, so we can uh, push the electrons uh, move in in the in the fixed direction, and then we can get the current flow uh, in in this uh, the the double uh, chain of the thermoelectric uh, devices. So here is the testing. Uh, the results of these devices. And here we also test uh, the mechanical uh, stability of the device it, uh, by the bending, uh, diff uh, by the bending, the by uh, bend the device in different uh, the radians. And also uh, we apply the, the bending uh, test to the device uh, for the several uh, hundreds of the times. And you can see that um, these devices show the excellent reliability and repeatability uh, under even the very high the mechanical uh, the actual force. So for this device, we can just uh, wear it uh, on the human arm, and then we can collect uh, the the thermal dispersion from human body, and then we can uh, charge. Uh, the the capa uh, the ca capacitors, and then we can use uh, the energy uh, stored to support the working of the small the commercial uh, calculators. So it's very uh, interesting that it's just a very simple uh, devices. Okay, so I introduced that uh, we uh, realize the, the uh, micro uh, energy harvesting devices by using the silk fiber. And uh, can we do more? As we talk about before, that we always that we, if, if we if we think about the working principle of these energy harvesting devices, we found that actually there's very clear or strong the how to say the 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 tight the relationship between the the external uh, stimulation and uh, the output. Uh, electrical signals. So, if we want to, if if we can figure out their uh, relative, the 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 how to say the relationship. So maybe we can use these devices serve as active sensors. What is what does this active sensors mean? For the some traditional the passive sensors, you always to 
applying the power to the sensor, right? For the, the, the piezo resistive sensor and the capacitive sensors, you have to apply the, uh, the power source to the sensors. And then you can measure the change of the resistance or the capacitance. So that we call it is the passive sensor. So, but if the devices can generate the power by itself, and then we can extract the information behind these output electrical signals, and then we can use the signals to detect the change of the external stimulation. So we can use these devices to serve as the active sensors. It means that the sensors doesn't need any applying the power source. So that if we try to use this silk fiber to realize the multi-sensing devices. Harbor this graphite uh, interdigital elect electrode um, by using the silk uh, fiber and film to form this silk fiber best, the multifunctional sensing patch. So that is very interesting work here. Uh, this is the fabricated devices. So we found that for this flexible, the printed sensor, it can be used to distinguish the what existing states. So what does what existing states mean? So you know that when we talk about the humidity, actually, you know that the water molecules has two different existing states. One is liquid, the mole water molecules, and one is the gases, water molecules. For the traditional humidity sensors, it just uh, has reaction with this both what existing states. Impossible for the traditional sensor to, to tell the difference of this what existing states. But we found that it's very interesting for the silk fiber film. It has the selective absorption to the liquid water molecules in the air, but there's not, there's no the reactions with the gases what molecules. So we can use this, the flexible printed sensor to distinguish the what existing states actually. So here's the test, uh, the curves. For the red curves, you can see that is the gases, uh, what molecules even is pumped to the chambers. So the sensors, there's nothing uh, changed. But for the liquids, uh, the what molecules, if we pump inside, so it's very, very fast to have uh, the reaction, uh, the the behavior uh, with uh, with uh, the, the 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 liquid water molecules. So here is the effect of inner digital electrode gap and uh, the silk fiber film thickness for the sensing uh, sensitivity of the devices. And uh, finally, we use uh, this uh, the sensors to. <coughs> to tell uh, the bracing uh, the states. So it can be used uh, to uh, to detect the normal, uh, the deep and fast the bracing states. Okay, so uh, we also study on the effect of humidity on the electrical output performance of the fabricated devices. And we found that, so actually, uh, when the water molecules uh, absorb to to the surface of the silk fiber. And so actually the change a little bit about the fingerprints on the peaks of the Ramis gutter actually. But the materials is still the silk fiber solution. So if we put the devices in the normal environment, um, room temperature and without any uh, heatings, so it will be just uh, fully recovered just after several minutes. And then we can use the devices, as we uh, said, uh, as we talk about that, we can use the devices to fabricate, um, um, you know, for the silk uh, fiber materials, it's very easy to lose electrons. So we can fabricate the devices um, to, to, to form the single electrode, uh, the triple electric night generator. So uh, we can use it as a sensor. But when you use uh, the fingers or the skin or some other materials to touch and friction on the surface, actually due to the easy losing electrons capability of the silk fiber film, so actually we can use it as the energy harvester or we can use it as the active sensor actually. So here is to show that uh, for these devices, 
is also can achieve to a very, very uh, good electric out performance. And we can attach this patch uh, to, to the joint of the human body to detect, uh, to detect the bending angles uh, of the human uh, joint. And so uh, there's the different uh, the electric uh, output uh, the the uh, the the waveforms. So that is what we said is active sensor because for this kind of sensor you don't need to apply the external the power source. So these devices can generate uh, the electrical uh, the output signals by itself. So we call it active sensor. And then, so this is a little bit summary that uh, we fabricated this multiple sensing uh, functions uh, that is uh, we uh, we uh, have uh, extremely uh, we have uh, experimentally uh, verified by using these devices. So just a simple um, <clears throat> change the connection state of this the double chains, we can use it to serve as energy harvesting or we can uh, use it to uh, serve as the sensor. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, the testing uh, reaction uh, between the thermal uh, energy harvesting and the multifunction the sensors. Okay, so the second uh, work is uh, by using the silk fiber to fabricate it, realize multiple sensing devices. So here is we show that, so you know that when people talk about the variable electronic devices, sometimes uh, we use some soft materials. But actually, if you look inside this uh, substrate, you will find that this is just kind of the hue. But we know that for our skin, actually, we hope that we 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 wish that this variable electronics can 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 be how to say the 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 breastbone, because if just the the, the film that is very uh, very how to say is very um, the probability of uh, of this film. There's uh, without any the air permeability, it will be uh, not comfortable for the human uh, body. So, based on uh, based on this the simple idea, we think about why not? Maybe we can fabricate it all fiber sensors to realize that it's comfortable the variable sensors. So, based on this idea, we fabricate it uh, uh, the 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 the, uh, the multiple uh, functional sensors by using the silk fiber and uh, atop uh, the fabric, and then we use the uh, electro spinning technology. <coughs> Actually, we use a combination of electro spinning process and the shadow mask uh, process, and then we can deposit um, the the we can deposit. The conductive fibers, uh, the uh, the 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 silver nanowise, uh, the fibers atop the fabric, and as well as the silk fibers, um, uh, uh, the atop uh, the fabric is. So then we can get these uh, all fibers sensors. So here we test the pressure, um, uh, the sensing uh, property of the devices, and uh, it showed that. The remarkable the resolution and the devices also show the very good the temperature sensing so why these silk fiber materials can be used to 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 detect the, the temperature change because when you apply uh, the heating uh, or the cooling uh, process to the to the devices actually uh, we will change uh, the orientation of the of the, uh, the electrons um, the polarization, so then we can get um, the different capacitance of the devices. So in this method, we can use the devices to detect the change of the temperature. And here is the humidity sensing of the device. And uh, we also test uh, the stability and uh, repeatability of the devices. Uh, more than 1,000 binding cycles and shows very good. And here is uh, we use uh, this uh, the fabricated devices uh, successfully uh, demonstrated to realize a smart mask to detect the breast instead of a human, and uh, you know that the breast actually it has a very <coughs> tight relationship with uh, the the health <coughs> with the healthy status of the human actually. 
And we also use the devices uh, to detect the bending angle uh, uh, recognition of the of the finger joints, actually. So this is the devices we fabricated. We call it all fiber. So it's suppressible, and uh, we I integrate successfully uh, uh, the several uh, different uh, the, the 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 detection uh, uh, functions, like the bending and pressing and humidity, temperature and uh, the 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 strength. Okay, so. Uh, the third, the uh, multi-sensing uh, sensors we fabricated by using the silk fiber is, uh, we call it ultra thin the transparent multiple, uh, the functional uh, sensors based on this the silk hydrogel for the health monitoring. So <clears throat> for the above the two work, the devices uh, are fabricated by using the silk fiber and film. But here we use uh, the silk uh, the hydrogel that is kind of a uh, little different. Why we use uh, the silk hydrogel because they can uh, uh, they can uh, bring the 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 stretchability to the fabricated devices. But if we if you just uh, use the silk fiber film, uh, it's it's very hard to get the fabricated device that has the stretchability. So that is the reason. And uh, also um, by using the silk hydrogel, so we can fabricate the ultra thin. Uh, the sensors. <clears throat> so here it, we test uh, the pressure um, sensitivity properties of the fabricated devices, and it shows very good. And even uh, more than two thousand uh, cycles, uh, the uh, the continuous working cycles, and it shows very uh, uh, the, the 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 stability of the devices. And here we use it sensors uh, serve monitoring. Uh, the facial muscle, uh, the signals like smile and laugh and angry, sad, um, and so on. And also, uh, we use uh, uh, the devices to detect uh, the motion of uh, the human, uh, the body, the joints mo uh, movement, uh, the arm and the fingers. And also, we uh, attach this ultra thin uh, the the sensors attached to the mechanical uh, the fingers uh, when the fingers to uh, to catch some uh, objective, and then we can uh, test the temperature, and we can uh, detect uh, the shape of the devices. So in the future, we can uh, use this technology to realize uh, what is the kind of uh, the objectives you have you 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 catch uh, by using the mechanical the fingers. And uh, here we also integrate uh, this uh, the auto thing uh, the sensors uh, with a mask to detect the breath instead of the human body and uh, uh, as well as to detect uh, the throat motion of the human and to uh, tell the cough state or the swallow state. Okay, so that is about energy harvesting technology and uh, the multiple sensing uh, technology by using the silk fiber. So finally, uh, we Think about uh, what is the future? We have the power source, we have uh, the multi-sensing technology. Is it possible to combine them together or in, in, in integrate them together within a microsystems? We have the power, right? We have the sensor. So if we combine them together, maybe we can realize the smart microsystems. So why not? Okay. So uh, just the, the third part, okay, I think the time is not uh, left so so much for me, but so I just uh, go very fast to see that. Uh, so for the silk fiber based microsystems, we have uh, several different uh, the trying actually. It's about the cell powered biomedical devices. And uh, we use this, um, the, the energy harvester devices to uh, stimulate uh, some uh, implantable the micro uh, needle arrays and uh, to control the motion of the signals of uh, the muscle uh, or detect the signals of the the the, the heart beating and uh, to uh, as well as uh, to stimulate uh, the 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 working of the nerves uh, and control the movement of the muscle and the cell power the mobile devices and control the cantilever you know the cantilever is very useful and is very essential the mems uh, the components. So we can use directly of the uh, the, uh, the the generated uh, the signals of uh, the the silk fiber and the energy harvesting devices to control the motion of the cantilever, and also we can use uh, this uh, stimulus. Um, how to say? We can use uh, 
uh, the, the, the electrical output, the signals to control the, the motion of the liquids uh, in the designed direction atop the surface. It's very interesting to realize uh, some uh, the, the controllable, uh, the motion, uh, the micro nano fluidic devices. And finally, we uh, fabricated active sensing and smart microsystem by using uh, the silk fiber based uh, the uh, energy harvested energy harvester and as well as multiple sensing uh, devices. So let's say this is a joint uh, plantable the micro needle electrode arrays uh, by using the devices. And this is for the liquid. Uh, just to quickly and uh, to show you some videos to see. Okay, you can see here. It's very easy that. Without any external the force, we just uh, use the micro energy harvesting devices fabricated by using the silk fiber film, and we can control the liquid, the micro liquids uh, moving uh, move in the designed controllable uh, directions and to realize the merging. <clears throat> okay, so can we do more? Yes. So here's the work that we fabricated all fiber, the hybrid non generator for variable applications. And so here is also the all fiber de devices by using uh, the electro spinning process and uh, the, the core materials is, uh, are the silk fibers and the PVDF fibers. So for the silk fibers, it serves as uh, the triplectric uh, effect. For the PVDF fibers, it serves uh, for, the, uh, for the, the piezoelectric effect. So actually this is hybrid, um, the devices. And then we can use it to control the micro cantilever. So how we can use it, we can use it to serve as smart microsystems. So we just simply attach the device to, at the joint of human body. So it's actually we can fabricate a very, very large the size of this the devices. Uh, but here is just a demo. So we attach it to, to the joint of the human body. And then when you, uh, uh have some, uh, the normal, uh, the movement of the arm, so we can collect the energy and store it. And, uh, but when people fall down or you use the arm to strike the table, um, uh, heavily. So the cantilever, we just active, uh, to, to swift from the off state to the on state. And then there will be the SOS, the signals which send it to the, uh, to the remote, uh, the, the, the terminal, like the cell phone. So here is, uh, the video you can see. Okay. So if you have a very heavy strike and then there will be the wireless the signal will be sent to the signals. So it's very interesting to uh, realize the smart closing actually. Okay, the demo two, that is, we integrated these uh, micro nano energy harvesting devices uh, with the RFID TARC. So you know that for the traditional RFID TARC, we use the two coins to deliver the power, right? So there's a very, how to say, it's, it's a critical challenge for this technology. Of course, it's very useful because there's a non-contact, uh, the technology for the recognition, but the distance, working distance of the technology is quite, quite small. It's only within the 10 uh, centimeters. So we integrate the micro energy harvesting devices fabricated by the silk fiber uh, with the RFID, the micro, uh, the, the, the TOG microsystems. So we can use the device to collect the energy, uh, the motion how to say the biomechanical energy from a human body uh, movement. And then we change it to the, 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 the electrical the signals. And this electric signals is large enough to support the working of the RFID in the microsystems. Of course, behind the, 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 the energy harvester, the fabricated, we also have some uh, research activity to, um, to improve the energy, uh, the, the micro energy, uh, the, 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 the power, uh, management circuit. And then finally, we get it cell power, the long working distance and the dual, the communication RFID active RFID, uh, microsystems. So I have two videos to show you that you see that we just simply wear this fabricated devices. And then, so the door, we just uh, know who can uh, in front of the door and the whether this guy uh, have the access to enter the room and then we can control uh, the the state uh, uh, on or off the door and also we can uh, realize the multiple um, 
the target the motion detection and alarm. So the second one. So um, we also can uh, fabricate the devices uh, um, sensors of uh, fiber um, uh, and then uh, to realize uh, the 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 control of uh, the to serve as the a human machine interface, and we just uh, <clears throat> fabricated the smart band and wear with uh, the hand. And then when you uh, move uh, the fingers, and we can detect the motion of the fingers, and then we can control uh, the motion of uh, the mechanical uh, the fingers. <clears throat> okay, so finally, I uh, just uh, give a very short comments about the all in one the perspective. So, what is mean all in one? All in one means that we have the power source. And we have the multiple sensing component, and uh, we definitely wish to integrate them together to form the smart microsystems. It means that put all of them inside within a small microsystem, and then to make this system to make this system uh, smarter. So here is uh, the, the 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 work uh, in my lab. We try, and uh, here is we have done that is uh, the. Uh, the, the the basic uh, stones we we have <clears throat> uh, we have to support uh, the, the 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 work. So we have the wafer level, the micro nano dual scale integration fabrication, and then we try to uh, realize multiple uh, the field coupling mechanism for the smart uh, smart micro uh, multiple sensing, and as well as uh, the hybrid uh, energy harvesting technology. And then finally, we combine them together. The functions with the power source to realize the cell-powered or even the microsystems. So, as an attractive future vision that we wish to integrate uh, the different the functional component, including but not but including but not limited to sensors, actuators, and integrated circuits and the power source uh, to realize to to in order to realize the cell-powered. Uh, the multiple sensing in the microsystem. That is, we call it cell powered and flexible variable, smart electronics and microsystems. So here is uh, the prototype uh, of the uh, smart microsystem we fabricated. And you can see here that is microenergy harvesting devices. And uh, of course, if you want to use energy from this micro nano energy harvester, you have to uh, design the micro energy power management circuit and to change this AC signal to the DC signal. <clears throat> and also we wish to combine the capacitive sensing mechanism. So, Professor and Zhang, uh, I think we have okay. to try to wrap up as soon as okay. possible. Thank you. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you so much. I finally, I would like to thank my student researchers and uh, my colleagues from uh, USTC and this work is also uh, supported by some uh, the national and uh, provincial fundings. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for like over an hour's wonderful talk. And uh, it's also actually my turn to introduce our very strong, um, very strong, let me see, panel today. Thank you. Um, do you need me so, just to stop my uh, screen sharing? Um, it's okay. I think I have already okay. started sharing. So our first uh, panelist today is Professor Chie Li. Um, he's a distinguished professor of Shanghai Institute uh, of Microsystem and Information Technology. Mm -hmm. Professor Li is also a vice director of the Science and Technology of Microsystems Laboratory. So Professor uh, Li received both his bachelor and the PhD degrees from University of Science and Technology of China, USCC. And also he's a visiting scholar at Delphi Research Labs. Uh, he's currently serving also as a vice president of Shanghai Sensing Technology Society um, and published uh, over 190 research papers hold many national and international patents. Professor Li has won the 2015, um, 2015 Shanghai Excellent Research Leaders, the National Prize for Technological Invention in 2012, and Shanghai Prize for Technological Invention in 2021, as well as the RT Award <coughs> in rates of the SAE. In so I think somebody has to mute the, the, the speaker. Um, 
So um, his research interests include the design, fabrication, and application of the micro and nano sensors. So welcome, Professor Lee. So today Hello. we also have our hi, Professor Lee. So we also have hi. our second panelist. Uh, um, is Professor Shuai Longzhang. Uh, Shuai Longzhang is a full professor with Beijing Institute of Technology. And he received his PhD from UK, and his research covers the micro manipulation technology, optical control, and uh, actuation technologies, biomems, and lab on chip technologies. He has published over 70 papers in PNAS, uh, Nature Communication, Science Advances, etc., and serves as a young editorial board member for engineering. So, as a project leader and key participant, Professor Zhang has led participation in multiple research projects funded by, for example, uh, NSFC, the most, as well as the Natural Science and Engineering Research Council for, of Canada, as well as the UK. So welcome, Professor Zhang. And also, we have our ex-challenger tonight uh, is Dr. Jiu Shui Xu from TU uh, Brunswick. Germany. So Dr. Xu received his PhD with the highest honors in the Institute of Semiconductor Technology is also from TU Braunschweig, Germany in 2020. And currently he is a postdoc fellow there. His research interests are MEMS gas sensors and biosensors, micro nano fabrications, and nano energy harvesters. So let's welcome all of the panelists and ex-challengers on the stage for the discussions. And uh, as usual, uh, we will have Dr. Xi. Uh, first turn is for the, our ex-challenger, Dr. Xi. So Dr. Xi, uh, the stage is yours. Please ask questions. Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks to Professor Zhang for your amazing and fa fabulous talk. So it's very... Cool idea. Actually, I could have a uh, hundred questions <laughs> by your talks. Very interesting. So um, maybe I start with one question that you um, skipped in the last part is about the all-in-one part. So from your talk, I feel that you, this very cool uh, idea. Maybe you can develop uh, another suit like a uh, Spider-Man or the Iron Man, which can produce self-powered and can do maybe also same time the uh, healthy and safety monitoring. So could you uh, explain or foresee how can be the full inter integration of these uh, flexible power generation and uh, also monitoring? And also maybe the, especially the, could it be a mass production for the industry application? Because now I see most of work are the label devices. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank uh, Dr. Xu. It's very, very nice talk. So, um, so just uh, give me one uh, second just to go uh, back to the slides. Okay, so um, for for the all in one, uh, the micro systems. So, um, yeah, I just uh, uh, just uh, response to the second question first. So about uh, the, the 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 commercial. Uh, the devices uh, for this all in one the microsystem. Uh, yes, you are right. Normally, uh, people show that uh, the work in the lab level, actually, laboratory level. So, uh, the question behind that uh, actually is, is not so easy. For, for all the technologies, it's not easy to realize um, the, the commercial um, the, the, the transform, actually. Uh, but the question is that we have to, uh, there's two, the key issues. The first that we have to, um, make it very stable. Uh, is a stable. It means that, uh, when you fabricate the devices, um, uh, for example, one, two, three, four. So three of them almost keep uh, the same, uh, the coexistence, uh, the features. And as well as we have to enhance, uh, the, uh, the successful uh, rent of uh, the, the the devices of the microsystems. So for the flexible devices, normally it's very hard to realize that actually. Uh, and the second, uh, uh, the 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 issues is uh, is about 
um, the cost actually. For the uh, flexible uh, the devices, uh, sometimes we used uh, some uh, materials and we used uh, some uh, the very expensive and we used some uh, the very expensive for the facility to fabricate the micro nano uh, the fabrication. So <clears throat> yeah, just to go back to uh, our work. So for uh, for for our work in my lab, we try to use some commercial fabrication technology. Uh, or industry fabrication technology to realize the flexible uh, devices. As I show in this slide, you can see that for the uh, substrate, actually that is the PI substrate, we use the flexible printed circuit board technology to realize the conductive connection of the electrical components. And then uh, it also allowed us to fabricate it some interdigital uh, electrodes, and then we just uh, cover this electrode, interdigital electrodes by using some uh, nanomaterials or functional material to realize the sensing functions. And uh, but the question is that you have to find the way that to fabricate some micro nano uh, the devices. So let's just uh, go back to okay. So let's see, um, just to see here. Okay. So here is that you can see that this is the devices uh, for the energy harvesting um, based on the, the thermoelectric uh, the effect. So we use the, the screen printing technology to realize the p -top N type, uh, the materials patenting in the micro, uh, the several, uh, the, the, the tens, uh, the micro, uh, the, the, the patterns. So then we can fabricate it. This is the thermal. Uh, electric uh, the devices to harvest the energy from the human body. Okay, so um, the other words in my lab, we try to use this industry fabrication technology, but we have to we have to uh, improve them because normally this industry fabrication technology means that it's very stable and low cost or cost effective, but it also means that it's not suitable for the micro nano fabrication. Right, so you have to improve them, modify them to let them to have the capability uh, to fabricate it uh, in different materials domains, and as well as you can patent in the micro even nano levels. So that is uh, uh, my answers for for your, uh, the first questions. So finally, uh, we try to uh, integrate is the my multiple uh, sensing devices and as well as micro energy harvesting devices together and to form this micro system. And uh, currently we also don't have uh, the commercial product, but I believe that uh, because we use the industry fabrication technology, we improve them to let them have the capability for the micro fabrication. And then uh, we already have the prototype to show that that is uh, the, the, the feasibility of this uh, smart the cell-powered multiple sensing microsystem. So in the future, so we could uh, realize uh, the commercial uh, uh, applications. So thank you so much. Thank you, you okay. too, Otto. Yeah. Okay, very nice. So do you have some further questions or can we move on? Uh, I, I see maybe also time is running and then Professor Lee and John, maybe they can ask their question, then we can discuss sure. that, I suppose. <laughs> sure, sure. So, so. So, Professor Lee, do you have any questions or comments for Professor Zhang? Okay, uh, Professor Zhang just gave a very nice talk, and I do have some questions for the talk. And uh, uh, the first one is, uh, since you have fabricated the census, and how can you make the uh, calibration on the, uh, I mean, flexible, uh, the substrate. Uh, I think it will be very important to uh, find uh, accurate sensor. Could you give me a? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. It's it's very critical questions. Actually, it's also very very good questions. Okay. So uh, you know that uh, when we talk about the sensor, of course, we hope that. Uh, uh, we realize the uh, accurate uh, the sensing or detection by using the sensors. So um, 
when you realize multiple sensing functions by a single chip, people always ask you, so when two different factors in the environment change uh, simultaneously, so how can you tell the difference between them? And also there will just have some interaction or there will be some effect from one uh, the environment factor to the others. So that is the question. So for the calibration, um, we just uh, fixed, or we just fixed. The, for example, uh, for, for the sensor, we have uh, three uh, the, the 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 functional uh, the sensing uh, how to say the three the sensing functions. So we just uh, keep uh, the two others uh, fixed, and then uh, we change one uh, of them. For example, the, we change the humidity, but we keep the temperature. We keep uh, the other the the bending. Uh, so it's just a fixed. And then uh, we can uh, calibrate uh, the the humidity, uh, the sensing or the sensitivity of the sensors. But as you say that when we change two of them, it's hard. So we try to, um, for the flexible uh, devices, we try to uh, use uh, the, uh, how to say, the data processing uh, circuit to tell the difference. Because for example, the humidity, for the uh, for the sensor, when you use the sensor to detect the change in humidity, so the the curve is very how to say it's uh, some kind of the smooth. It's not a change sharply, but if you apply some force to the to the sensors, and then the curve is changed very sharply. So when two environment factors or two uh, stimuli applying the simultaneously or together to the sensors. So we can use uh, the data processor circuits to tell the difference, actually. But it's not the best choice, <laughs> in my opinion. So in my group, we also have another different technique rules. One is based on uh, we integrate different uh, the, the, the component together within a single uh, the sensors. We also have the sensor arrays, but that is hard to realize uh, the flexible sensor. We use the silicon, uh, the thin uh, piezoelectric film atop silicon. We call it uh, AKA the T pose. And this T pose, the silicon arrays, we can fabricate it uh, within uh, one uh, centimeter with one centimeter, uh, the size of the chip. And then we can uh, integrate, uh, fabricate uh, more than 13, even 15, uh, the, the sensor, uh, the chip uh, within uh, these devices. And then we have different, um, I would say, the, the 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 connections to get the signals, and then we have uh, the IC circuit to detect them. So, in this method, I think that is uh, can be used to avoid uh, the interference of the environment factors. <laughs> I hope that answered the questions. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yes, it's to, to help to understand the, uh, how the uh, sensors work. And uh, the, one more question is, um, what's the lifetime of your sensors? I mean, maybe for the uh, microsystems. Okay, you mean uh, how, how large the size? Uh, I mean, how, uh, does it stable enough? Well, okay. So lifetime. Okay, the lifetime. lifetime. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, as you see that uh, I show you some uh, the figures we test the life, not lifetime, because we just uh, show that uh, stability and uh, the um, the the how to say the the stability of the devices. We apply the continue uh, the the force or, or the continue some environmental changes to the devices. And uh, I, if I remember correct, is uh, the largest number is about more than one thousand. I know that is not enough. Um, but but how to say? Uh, even uh, more than one thousand, um, the, the devices showed very uh, very stable actually. Uh, but you know that for the practical uh, applications, for for practical applications, so normally uh, it's it's more than uh, ten thousand <laughs> and and, oh, and a hundred yeah. of thousand. <laughs> So uh, we, we still have a long way to go to 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 realize uh, the real robust the sensors. So we have. I, I think uh, one um, effective the way is to to package the sensors. 
So, but but we don't have so much work uh, in this field. Uh, in the future, uh, I I uh, very very um, eager to try. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, that's all great questions. So now let's move to Professor uh, Shai Longzhang. Uh, could you give some comments or questions? Uh, so first, I'd like to thank Professor Zhang from UESTC for this wonderful talk. Uh, it's really insightful and it, uh, uh, it's actually quite insightful for my own work. Uh, so my question is actually about the mechanism. So because you know nowadays the battery has been, uh, the battery technologies has evolved uh, dramatically in recent years. So people develop all kinds of small batteries. They are power strong, uh, lightweight and can be easily to integrate with uh, these uh, micro devices or nano devices for all kinds of applications. So is this idea of self power uh, as compatible uh, compared with those devices driven by a battery? Okay, um, I think of course compatible. So, um, but, 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 uh, so I have to clear, uh, clarify that so we never try to replace the battery. <laughs> At this stage, it's very, very hard. Uh, even you see that, okay, so I'm not sure you can see my slides or not. So even when we talk about uh, the all-in-one, uh, the, uh, the, the, the cell-powered, uh, the smart, smart microsystem, we still have this multiple stage, the power storage. So if you consider the battery as the, the power storage, uh, the component, so how is it possible to replace completely of the battery? Impossible. That's the, my personal uh, opinion. Because when we, when we, when we talk about uh, the microsystem, uh, we want to always make the system uh, work uh, in very stable state, right? So even you can get some powers from the environment or even from the human body itself, but the power is not continuous. It's not the DC power. So we have to use the power management circuit to, to get the DC power. Even you get the DC power, it's sometimes it's not large enough and sometimes it's not uh, stable. So normally we still have to use the energy storage uh, the unit to help us to construct very stable the microsystems. So, but um, as you say that the battery grow very fast, but uh, in my opinion, the micro energy harvesting, the field is also growing very fast. Uh, I, I think it's not conflict between them. So for the energy harvesting technology, people try to, uh, how to say, try to get more power from the environment and from the human body itself. And for the battery, people try to, increase uh, the storage density of the battery and then to make the battery can work for a long term. But for battery itself, you, if you can just combine these micro energy harvesting devices with the battery together, so we can enlarge the, the, the how to say, the single lifetime of the battery. So for example, you charge the battery, normally you can use it for three days, but if you have the micro energy harvesting technology, you combine them together to form these cell power microsystems. So the battery can work more than three days, maybe four days and five days. So that is, we can con still consider that is uh, the very big, uh, the technology, the milestone, right? So I, I think that is, it's compatible, but I would like to say, let's combine them together and then to make the cell power microsystem is more attractive. Thank you. So thank you, Professor Zhang. And I have another small question is about yeah. the energy conversion efficiency. Uh, because for example, you give some examples of solar cells and other source, other source of uh, technology that can convert uh, energy into electricity, power, uh, power electricity. So my question is like, you, if you harvest this energy from vibration, from human, human uh, movement, uh, what's the energy conversion efficiency compared with these mature technologies such as solar cells? Okay, thank you so much. Very good questions. So actually, I have a table uh, to to compare them together, but uh, unfortunately, I didn't put it in today's uh, the presentation. So um, depends on the application field, actually. 
or we can say this depends on uh, what kind of uh, the configuration. Uh, for example, we for solar cell, we also have the silicon based solar cell. Uh, we have uh, the photovoltaic uh, silicon solar cell. We have uh, some organic solar cell for the flexible solar cell, right? So different of them have the different uh, the energy conversion efficiency. Um, for the, the other technology uh, as well, it has uh, uh, if if the application field is different and the configuration of the device is different, um, uh, the the energy conversion efficiency is also different. But I can uh, give you uh, how to say a brief uh, um, comparison. So uh, as I say that for the triplectric uh, nanogenerators. The, the highest uh, energy conversion is about 85%. But I say that is based on the liquid metal. Uh, to be honest, it's uh, still very hard to use this liquid metal for the practical applications. So if you consider for some uh, the practical applications, just to use the normal materials and the normal the frictions, so it's, uh, fi energy uh, harvesting frequency, uh, energy harvesting efficiency is normally around 14%. So you can see that it's compatible with the solar cell actually. Right, but if you talk about the, for example, the the thermoelectric effects, uh, the devices, the energy conversion efficiency is quite lower. <laughs> so, but if you talk about uh, the electromechanical effect, like uh, the wireless power transmission, you can talk about that energy conversion efficiency as high as high as the nineteen percent. So, but uh, if you just uh, consider that is uh, the magnetic and the coins. They have the relative motion. You get, you can also get the power, right? So in this method, sometimes the energy conversion efficiency is about the sixteen percent. So um, depends on application fields. If you for the variable, so maybe solar cell and uh, the, uh, the 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 thermoelectric effect, and and as well as uh, some triplectric or uh, we call it electrostatic, uh, the effect the devices is is, is uh, are much uh, attractive. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right, yeah, thanks everybody. Time flies very fast and uh, it's actually, um, we are over the time. Uh, we, we Today, uh, we won't have enough time to go through the question from the webs. So it's time for me to wrap up and thank again for the wonderful talk tonight. And uh, we have to stop here. Thank you, Professor Zhang and all the panelists tonight for the great discussions. And also thanks for everyone uh, who watched tonight. So to finish, let me first uh, representing ICANX to present this electronic certificate to Professor Zhang to show our appreciation for this wonderful talk tonight. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Professor Chen for this very nice uh, the chair and thank all the panelists, uh, the experts. Thank you so much. It's a very wonderful night for me. Thank you. Thank you. And also just uh, a little advertisement uh, before the talk end. For the next week, we are going to have ITX Talks 100, uh, 151. Professor Nadal from, uh, for the talk, uh, symmetry and topology in photonic nanostructures. Please stay tuned. And so for now, thanks everyone and good night. Bye bye.不再是奇迹，不再是幻想，此刻正感觉全世界离我鼓掌。不必太在意身旁近期的目光，可以点点头，可以放声歌唱。我创造奇迹，我拥有梦想，我希望看见所有骄傲的脸庞。再为曾经失败放弃或感伤。
努力才是真的方向。I can, I can， 没有什么可以阻挡心中无限的。